am I looking at you or here? You? Perfect. So, Anderson Blue, based out of New York, graphic designer, illustrator. My name is Danny Haas. I, uh, full-time illustrator, work from home. Illustration, cartooning, do cover art, poster art. So, my name's Alex Cabal, and I'm an illustrator based in Los Angeles. Oh, hi. Uh, so, I'm Grace Yang. I'm, a, I'm an illustrator and a visual development artist. So, my name is Man One. i um, been an artist my whole life. Got my start on the streets of LA as a graffiti artist, 87. So, I've been doing it for a minute, you know? My name is Sarah, and I'm a representative of Pasquale Productions. Jeff Pasquale is the artist. He's a self-taught watercolorist. So my name is Terry Huddleston. I do pop art and pinup art, as you can see. Pretty much in a nutshell, what I do is I take my favorite sneakers, mix it with pop culture, and I bring it to life. Our background is I drop out of college, started my career as a screen printer in Orlando, Florida, um, and just haven't looked back. I just love uh, art as a whole, but I love doing cartoons. So I basically draw most of my stuff as if it were a cartoon. So anything I draw is like, if you want to see like maybe a Richard Pryor, I draw him like a cartoon angle. I like to do portraits um, and I like to specifically draw women of color and like just add um, florals or plants and flowers to kind of like bring it life. And I like using um, contrasting bright colors uh, to like accentuate like dark skin. I like to do concept art uh, for games, maybe. Yeah, that's like my, my goals. I produce murals all over the world uh, for, for public, you know, public murals, public art, whether it's for a city or organization. I also do uh, a lot of corporate commission type of work for big brands, things like that. Um, but I also sell my art and I do paintings, original paintings, commission work on canvas. I exhibit in museums and galleries. Obviously, I do merch, so I kind of do like the whole the whole thing, you know. Like I don't just stick to one lane. I like to like be a commercial artist as well as a fine artist, you know. Uh, I got my original series here of characters that uh, me and my wife came up with that uh, we're trying to do something different with. Uh, does all kinds of mixed media right now, playing with collaging and things, and he does most of his favorite shows and characters that he grew up with. I personally think it was just my influence of watching too much cartoons as a kid, a lot of Looney Tunes, a lot of Disney. You know, the first thing I learned how to draw was Garfield. So that's the reason why you see such bold lines, such a bold colors. It's just from the stuff that I grew up on as a kid. And I kind of took what I like, I left what I didn't like, and just made this blend into what you see today. Honestly, it has to be being from New York. Um, I'm a former basketball player, so sneakers is just in the culture. You know, growing up, I wanted to be like Mike, so I was definitely in that target market. And honestly, growing up, I thought if I had the Jordan sneakers, I'd play better. And yeah, I think that's what started my whole love for sneaker culture. The long stem love of Star Wars and then coming into the Clone Wars and, you know, really digging uh, her, you know, uh, partnership with Anakin, being his Padawan, watching how they grew together, uh, her separation from the Jedi Order. It's just it's a well-written character. I loved her power. I loved her story in the Clone Wars, loved her partnership with Anakin, being his Pano Padawan and uh, how they uh, progressed her through the years and uh, her separation from the Jedi Order and she's such a powerful female figure in the Star Wars universe and I was really drawn to her for that. Pop culture from a blurred eye view, so I just take a bunch of stuff we grew up with, movies and cool stuff and just flip it in a way where it's more catered to stuff you don't see, you know, uh, it's stuff I want to see. So maybe you walk the cons and you might not see different aspects of maybe black characters or just ethnic or whatever I thought was cool, that's what I started with. And then they just expanded into whatever and I started remixing certain stuff and that's where it goes. Like empowered, strong, confident, um, yeah, just <laughs> just like like kind of like female empowerment too. I always like get inspiration from life first. So like when I see like a girl on the street wearing something cool or fashion magazines, and then I sketch it out, um, and then I just like go from there like digitally. So I draw everything on Photoshop. 
Yeah, so from start to finish. Slice of life scenes, um, when you could just kind of see a character in a moment in time. So that's the kind of scenes I do like to draw. I think like when I was a kid, I liked drawing like Disney characters and anime characters because I was really into like anime and comics, especially Sailor Moon. So that's kind of, I guess, where it like started from, like especially because it's all women too. And um, it just like grew from there. So. Uh, I've been drawing pretty much my whole life, but the Ninja Turtles, I was like, I was a big fan of Ninja Turtles when they came out. I drew a ton of Ninja Turtles and Venom. And Venom, those two things. I drew a lot of those when I was a kid. Right. Yeah. My artwork veers towards being very kid friendly, um, and uh, but also like a little dark. And uh, I like to I, what I like to do is I like to take stuff that's not necessarily for kids, like you know something like a movie like Pulp Fiction, make it kid friendly. I started off on the streets, 16 years old. Um, just tagging on the buses in LA, the RTD, and um, my first time uh, doing graffiti, actually a friend was, was writing on the, on, the, on the window of the bus. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm doing graffiti. Gave me the marker, he's like, write whatever you want, just don't put your real name. So I hit up uh, Mantronics, which is an old school hip hop band, and I was listening to my, my headphones, so I was just being stupid. I was like, all right, Mantronics. But then I was hooked. I was like, I want to do this like every day. Um, but then I wanted to do it right on the streets, you know, like I got tired of the buses. But on the streets, Mantronics was too long. By the time I got to the X, I probably get arrested. So I, I shut it down to the MAN, you know, sh shrunk it down. So Man became my street name. And the one is like, you're the originator of that name. So I became Man One. So all these years, even after I went to college, got my degree and decided to do this full time, um, I just stuck with Man One. I figured that's uh, the name people know me on the streets and that's what I grew up with and you know I'm still doing graph in one way or another so might as well stick with that name you know. I like to describe Jeff's style. Uh, it definitely has like a kinetic energy to it. There's like an organized chaos to the way that he uses the watercolor to capture the energy of the characters. There's a lot of motion and the kind of drip splatter effects that he does. Uh, so that's how I kind of like to talk about it. There's like a, a, a organic kind of flow with the way that he captures the gesture of the different characters that he likes to do. He uh, started out tattooing, playing with acrylic, dabbled in oil and things like that. And I think for Jeff, he really enjoyed the kind of free flow aesthetic that watercolor offers. He likes the kind of messy organization that it can give him. Um, he's definitely learned a lot of control with watercolor. I think in the beginning of his practice, he was really loose and raw and gritty with the way that he used watercolor. And now he kind of is able to take more time and kind of uh, still utilize the messy flow of watercolor, uh, but with more layering and time and love, there's definitely a progression of his watercolor skills to be seen. Well, I, I came into comic books from a weird angle, so I've always liked uh, box design. So I kind of came in from a graphic designer point of view over a uh, love of a character point of view. Now that came later, but I always liked the aesthetic of how packages look. So I've always incorporated that into my artwork. So, it, I mean, it's a form of pop art, but I didn't know that at the time as a kid, you know. I just knew I liked when stuff was bold lines and. Uh, case in point, when you got like a Transformers toy, the box looked better than the toy. The, the box was cooler than the toy, so you, you end up looking, I mean, I know me, I'm like looking at the box, and so like, this don't look nothing like this, like, you know, so, yeah, that's, that's where that comes from. That and um, I got a very, um, I've always liked uh, propaganda style art and religious art, because it tells a story, like all in one shot, you know, they just don't draw. Mother Mary, like they, they put all this little stuff in there so you can infer a lot of other things just by looking at one image. And it, it's kind of how um, uh, movements can move faster through images because the images don't take that long to communicate the message. So I want to definitely, you know, communicate the same thing with our superhero worship, so to speak, uh, where you, in one shot you get it and you, you're able to move along. First inspiration was probably maybe uh, Maury Turner, Wee Pals. And then it's uh, then you see like a, the Cosby Kids, you see some of that stuff, or uh, like Ernie, Ernie Barnes, Frank Morrison stuff. Like even I take from shows because I used to be like a young artist and that wasn't in. So you might see like a like a Good Time show, 
And you see JJ doing art. I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, he's doing art. It wasn't his art, but it was just like seeing little stuff like that and you take from it. And that, that was a lot of inspiration because like We Pals was basically in the newspapers and it was black and white and you used to just see it and you're like, oh, it's, you can see yourself in that. And then you take the Stan Lees, you see Power Man and Iron Fist, you see Black Panther, you see Falcon. So it's just a mix of all that stuff that just kept me going, that wanted me to keep doing cartoons and just art as a whole, so yeah. About five or six years ago, it was a gallery show in San Francisco based on superheroes, and I did a Clark Kent piece, just playing on the duality of Clark Kent and Superman, how it's so easy for him to just be one and the other, but they're still the same person. Um, then it kind of just spiraled into a series of telling the stories of the dualities of the character, or the good and the bad, stuff like that. So yeah, it was just kind of a big snowball effect after that. I, mean, I guess getting started in screen printing lent my style to minimal colors and uh, just a real minimal process, actually. Uh, so it's real minimalist, uh, a lot of pop culture references and stuff like that, so that's what I'm into. It was more like kind of a therapeutic thing for me because I always struggled with my own like self-identity with especially with my skin. So to kind of like help boost my self-esteem, I wanted to draw like really cool like dark skin girls and like to kind of like I wanted to draw them with confidence to kind of give myself confidence. Do you get me? Yeah, so like it was kind of like to inspire me to like be confident in myself. Well, I think for me it's the spontaneity of it, you know? Like yesterday I showed up to paint this piece. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't have a sketch. I just started freestyling. And I just knew I wanted to do something for Stan Lee. Just do a, a rest in peace, kind of commemorative piece, you know? And in graffiti that's done a lot, you know? Um, when someone passes away that you respect, you put them up on the walls. So that's kind of what I wanted to do here at Decon. So I did the, the Stan piece behind me. Um, and the thing about it is when you're painting live, people are like mesmerized, you know, like, because they're just like, how does it go from a blank wall to a full finished piece, you know, because most people see graffiti after it's done. It's done. And so when they see them actually being produced and being created in front of their eyes, I mean, people really like it, you know. You're not thinking of anything else. It's like, you're just totally zoned in on what you're doing. And um, it's not complicated or, or, or tasky. It's just like, it's, your enjoyment, you know? So it's like being able to, you know, do a line, be like, oh, that's cool, that doesn't work, I'll do it this way. And, and it's just kind of a, a way to work things out in your mind. And um, I mean, that's what I love about graph is that there's no wrong way to do it, you know? As long as you're having fun and you're creating, you're expressing yourself, that's exactly what graph is about, you know? Um, I, like, um, I like the uncanny valley of a lot of detail, but also with a cartoony aesthetic. So I want to like merge that, that right up to the line where it doesn't look realistic, but it doesn't look like a cartoon either. It's like right in the middle. It, because it, it just does something to my eye to see really sharp detail contrasted with uh, a cartoony structure. You know, so it, it's somewhere right in the middle. Yeah, I would say a lot of my art would be um, expressive of my own. Uh, art for me is kind of is a therapeutic as well. Like it allows me to express emotions I'm not usually um, comfortable with expressing. Favorite piece of mine uh, outside of the Studio Ghibli piece because everyone loves the Studio Ghibli. I really like the Link uh, portrait he does. It's very nice. I'm not even a huge Legend of Zelda fan, but the way that he did it, which he actually uh, was creating. Uh, Designer Con a couple years ago, we have it as a print now, one of my favorite pieces today. There's a lot of nostalgia that comes, so uh, you kind of see one and then you pick up off the others. People love kind of recognizing all the older animes that people don't see often on the market anymore. Um, but other than that, man, like Studio Ghibli gets a lot of love. Um, it depends. They, they all have their own kind of unique take that people love to respond to for either uh, the full scale pages that he does with the full bleed or the very minimal uh, capturing of the single character too. My favorite sneaker, which is crazy, it's not even an Air Jordan sneaker, it's a uh, Scottie Pippen Up Tempos. Has air on the side. Yeah, the big AI. I don't know why, but it's just like, 
I, I remember Will Smith wearing it. I remember all all the stars wearing it. And yeah, man, my favorite sneaker growing up. I love the David Bowie one. Doing the Ziggy Stardust and the Jareth from Labyrinth. Uh, uh, I don't know why I like that one the best. It was a lot of fun to do. A lot of fun to research. Yeah. Um, so that was a great one to work on. This, I mean, the Lando, when I, that was another thing. We, when I saw Lando in Star Wars, and you're like, oh, we, we in space too, and he was cool. So you just see that, and now it's just certain things you see, and you're just like, oh, okay. Currently, it'd be the figures themselves, but I also like how the light plays with figures. So I like, um, uh, I do like to play with lighting a lot, like, you know, sunset or like, um, there's a thing called magic hour lighting. It's when the sun is just about to set. Yeah, it's everything turns like golden and it's beautiful. Yeah, so I like to play with that kind of um, colors. I mean, I've always had my favorites. Uh, growing up as a kid, I love Superman a lot. Uh, these days, I'm a big Captain America fan, but I don't know, man. I, you know, Black Panther definitely then came up, but uh, I, I, I just like um, guys that have virtues. Like we, we've kind of seen a lot less of that, and everybody's an anti-hero now. And it's it's fun when you're like in your 20s, but when you're 40, you're like, hey, hey, we can't we can't have a bunch of Eric Killmongers running around because they're gonna kill us too. Um, I'm a big He-Man, Masters of the Universe fan. The movie? No. <laughs> I actually, I saw that in the theater when I was like seven, and I cried after it was over because I was like, that's not, that's not He-Man, that's not he uh, No, not the movie, the cartoon. Yeah, and all the toys, of course, yeah. It's a weird thing, but even as a kid, like, I loved the colors. Like, the, the color palette of that whole world, all the characters and stuff, that really, like, jumped out. Of course, all the, the villains. I'm a big fan of villains more so than heroes. Uh, Pinhead. Pinhead, it's a good villain. So the ones I created behind me basically are based on Jungian archetypes, which are just to say there's it's a psychological language that uh, pretty much every brain communicates in this same uh, set of symbols. And so every story comes from the same uh, set of archetypes. So, you know, there's, there's the mother-daughter, there's the father-son. Uh, you've heard of, it's even looser, the Thanatos complex and the Oedipus complex, all this stuff is basically, um, was co-opted by psychology and made into uh, story tropes that just get repeated over and over again. And people don't even know that they're taking it in or that they even know the language of it, but they like Star Wars classical archetypes, you know, the mentor and the student, the master and apprentice, you know, stuff like that. It never gets old because it's eternal. It's something that um, we, we all kind of have a built-in like uh, love of, I should say. So I wanted to do stories that were made with those basic ingredients and then I can go and do stories about everyday human existence, just anything, somebody going to the store, to somebody going through a bad breakup, to whatever, and seeing how these archetypes interface with their everyday lives.